Did, did you listen to Jeff, Jeff and, and Professor Hamo in the morning? morning? Here's what you read. Kenya was number one in the entire African continent in the Public Innovation Awards in Brazzaville. I did receive an award for these innovations. The Kenya Defense Forces got an award because they invented a mobile kitchen. Now, the Coffee Research Foundation uh, got an award because of developing a disease-resistant variety of coffee called Batian. Uh -huh. The Vet Labs in Kabete won an award because they developed a digital pen. Now, out of the 54 African countries, Kenya had four awards in innovation, and it was wow. number one. What? But the media <laughs> did not highlight that. No. <laughs> I was actually scheduled to do an interview at the JKU when I came back. Yes. It was hurriedly cancelled because there was a political event. So I think the media has a lot to play yeah. in terms of bringing up some of these innovations that are coming up. Yes. Because there's no country that is going to develop, mm -hmm. leave alone industrialize, unless the country invests in science, technology and innovation. Absolutely, Doctor. You know, Hapo Mongel. This is what corruption. Yes, I do. Nani Ameshiko. Rotich. Rotich. That is the hottest story now. Can you imagine? Yes. And we forget these guys who are doing the real Life work. changing. Doctor, tell us about your experience in Cuba 12 right. years ago. Yeah. It's a very interesting story. Go on. Now, Jeff, about 12 years ago, I was invited to participate in a, in a conference in Cuba. Cuba is a very small country with a very small population, smaller economy than Kenya, but they have one of the best healthcare systems, probably actually better than the US. The reason is that they were actually forced to fight it, to be in that position because of the circumstances that they were in. Mm -hmm. Because they suffered blockade from the east, I mean from the west, mm -hmm. because of the governor system. Okay. And because of that, they were not able to access essential medical supplies and, and, and needs. But they, they responded to that by setting up a biotechnology facility called Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. And that is a facility that I visited. And when I went there, I was so impressed and motivated to converting my knowledge into products and services. And that is how my journey to making this product started. And then you, four years ago, you put this product on the market, mm -hmm. Smoo Gel. Yes. Explain it to us, please. Right. Now, there are three products that I would want to talk about. Okay. And I want to start with the ones that are already in the market. Mm -hmm. Now, one of it is called Smoo Gel. Smoo Gel is a lubricating gel. It addresses a dryness among women. Women suffer dryness for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm being certain stage of the cycle, using certain contraceptives, using certain antibiotics, um, dryness that is also caused because of breastfeeding, women who are breastfeeding. Now, women who, have, um, who are using anti-cancer drugs, they get so dry that even walking becomes a problem. More importantly, one of the cultural practices that um, we have in this part of the world, mm. in African continent, is FGM. Oh or what we call female circumcision. And this also seriously causes um, um, dryness. When you're looking at the percentages of, um, of the prevalence mm -hmm. of um, female circumcision, yeah. you'd be surprised that in this country, we have about 27% of women who have undergone FGM. And that is one of the major causes of, the, of, of dryness. Mm -hmm. Of course, this also affects um, deliveries. Okay. Um, complications during that. So this product will address that. Okay. Now, in the hospitals, uh, the product is used when you're doing deliveries, when you're doing examinations like vaginal examinations, mm -hmm. when you're doing um, examination of the post-it. So those are all the reasons that uh, you, you, you use for this yes. product. And uh, it's available at uh, the local available chemist? In the chemist, we are currently also selling to Kemsa. Wow. And we are competing with um, a locally, I mean, uh, an imported product called KY Jerry, which is Johnson & Johnson American. Yes. Mm -hmm. And really what we are saying is that in the spirit of buy Kenya, build Kenya, let us support our own innovations mm -hmm. by I, giving them privacy. Are you yes. getting the support, Doctor? So far, it's lukewarm, but it's coming up. Mm -hmm. It's coming it up. It could be better. It could be better.
because it's uh, th this product is as good if not better than this other product we have actually done a lot of studies and this is a good product i've engaged all the key uh, health providers in almost all the hospitals i've uh, presented to gainers through kenya Obsex and ecological society conferences in their uh, annual conferences and they're all happy with the product. Like it's it. a good product. Yeah. Yeah. Smoo gel, it's mm, called. Yeah. Smoo gel. Huh? Where'd you get the name from? That's an interesting one. The, yeah. worth, the first letter S is from sex. Uh -huh. And then M. And then of course I, I put gel. Uh -huh. So sex men union and then gel. Sex men union? Yes. Gel. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then tell us about this now for the ultrasound. Yes. Now, um, then we have a second product which is also in the market and this is called Smoothscan. Smoothscan. Now, Smoothscan is used um, when you want to examine the development of the baby in the womb. So any procedure that requires ultrasound, this product will be used. I hope you remember that um, the government signed a contract for the provision of medical equipment. So these are some of the consumables that will be required by those medical right. equipment. So when a woman goes for a test, you know, the, the doctor applies this gel on the stomach yes. and then the ultrasound. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what they use. Right. And it's right. made in Kenya. It is made in Kenya. By you? I, I actually <laughs> I invented this. We are this talking to, to an inventor. inventor. Yes. Hey. We are inventing things out there. Now we have our own. We have our own. Who's hardly recognized. We need to be a Kenere. Oh, no. Daktari, man. We yes. owe you an apology yes. as a nation. In 12 years. As a nation. Imagine, as a nation. <laughs> We have not talked about it. We need to tanga tanga on you. Made in Kenya. Oh. Build Kenya by Kenya. Yes. Right. Remember this name, Dr. Peter Gishohi Mwethera. Wow. Works at the Institute of Primate Research. And now, folks, this is the killer one. This is the one. Yeah? Dr. Mwethera has invented another gel mm -hmm. that hopefully will help prevent HIV. Tell us about that, Doctor, which is still in trials, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Go on. So, so Jeff, um, so I've just talked about the two products yes. which are in the market. Mm -hmm. Now, this work has taken about 11 years. One of the biggest challenges we need uh, research-based innovations is that they are long-term. And the financial outlay is huge. Because so far, I've spent 200 million Kenya shillings. Wow. And the research is not easy no. and it's not cheap because to make one drug internationally it will cost you about a billion US dollars and it will take you about 10 years to do that. To make one vaccine internationally the costing is about 2 billion US dollars taking about 10 years. Now the third product which I now would want to talk about is called Uniprone. Now, Uniprone is a product that has potential to prevent HIV infection and pregnancy at the same time. What that means is that it's a gel that you put in the vaginal region mm -hmm. and it may kill the sperm and could also kill the HIV. We have done a lot of work in baboons. The reason why we are using baboons is that they are very close to humans. Mm -hmm. If you look at their cycle, they are like human. They shed the same amount of blood when they are menstruating like human. So when you look at the anatomy, the same. So the way a drug or a vaccine will work in a baboon is like it works the same way in human. So this product uh, is a gel that we believe uh, if we are able to do the human clinical trials, because that's one of the legal requirement of such a product, because there's no such a product in the market. Anyway, anywhere in the world. We do not have a product that you can put in the genitals to prevent HIV infection. What we have are the ARVs, mm -hmm. uh, which of course are used um, for, for prevention. Yeah. Good. Now, so a microbicide is expected to work the way I've explained. So this gel, you put it in the genitals, kills the sperm, and also uh, kills the virus. Uh, it would be a very good strategy for empowering women, because you will have given women a product they can use, to prevent the infection and also pregnancy without consent from the man. Ah. If you think about the cordon, because really that is a choice, yes. a product for prevention, mm -hmm. um, it's at the whim of the man. 
because depending on the econo economic empowerment, mm -hmm. there's some men who cannot accept to use condoms. Correct. So this jail, if we are able to do the human clinical trials and commercialize, then it will be a very good strategy for empowering women. women. So how does it work? <coughs> this is how it works. Um, if you look, if you measure the pH, pH is how acidic or how alkaline something is. The pH of the normal healthy human vagina is between 3.5 to 4.5. At that pH, no sperm will survive and the virus will also not survive. But what happens is that during coitus or during sex, this deposit of the male ejaculate leases the pH from 3.5, 4.5 to about close to 7 because the semen pH is about 7.1. And because of that raising of the pH, then the sperm are able to survive and the HIV survives. So what we have done is that with our knowledge in reproductive health, we have come up with a product that is heavily buffered so that even when you deposit the semen, the ejaculate, the pH does not change. Mm, it stays ah, at 3, three and a half to 3.5 to 4.5. Yeah. That is really the mechanism of action of this product. Uh, have uh, you understood anything the doctor no, said? Just with Jifani, my dear. Brother, brother, what's up? No, you never understand. Hey, hey, hey. Look at you. No, me neither saw. pH. Ni saw. Three and a half yes. to four and a half. Kukram. Normal. Ni saw. Kabisa idea. Just a bad idea. Doctor, that is fascinating stuff, by the way. I can't, you know, so, I, I didn't realize the sperm raises the pH, pH. level it does, yes. to seven. Yeah. But this gel hopefully yes. will right. maintain, maintain the pH level. Yes, at, at the level of the vagina. So, so the sperm dies. Yes. And the virus dies. You know what I mean? The virus pH. acidity. Oh. The HIV virus is very susceptible to pH changes. Okay. Yeah, so even if you took it and dropped it in um, anything that is acidic, it dies. Oh, yeah. So, this so what if someone prevents. already has HIV? HIV? Now, this is for prevention, it's yeah. not for oh, cure. Okay. And by the way, Kenya has um, made tremendous improvement in terms of the, the reduction of the prevention uh, rate because um, we were about 15% uh, mm -hmm. 10 years ago prevalence. Mm -hmm. okay. Today we are about 4.8. Wow. wow. And this is because of the kind of the program that yes. the government has put in place. Uh -huh. So we do appreciate that. But still a lot needs to be done yes. as far as the prevention uh, measures are concerned. Absolutely. Good. Mm. 4.8? Yeah. We're yeah. not 4.8, yeah. From 15. Yes. There is a time um, in the 80s we used to have death rates due to AIDS complications mm. and related issues of 200 people per day. That was like uh, two bomb blasts, what we had here. Yes. Wow. At the US Embassy. Now That's you're okay. looking at about 28,000 a year. Which divided by 12. Yes. So we, we've done very well in terms of uh, measures towards um, reducing the infection rate. But it's still, it's still, it is still, high. It's still too high. Yes. Yes. yes, still too high. And, and compared to other African countries, mm -hmm. because I remember South Africa was also very high. Yes. We are ahead of South Africa in terms of the programs that are geared towards reducing the infection rate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Actually, Kenya could be number two or three in the Sub Saharan region. Oh. In re helping reduce. Yes, in helping reduce. And that's why we really need to come up with more programs so that we can go even lower than that. Hey. Unbelievable, Doctor, like, I can believe, uh, you know, the kind of work that's going on right here, <laughs> right here in Kenya, <laughs> we, made in Kenya. We have no idea. And that's why Jeff was saying mm. that the media has a strong role to play. Oh, yes. Yeah. If we can um, stop just talking about and focusing on corruption, it's good to talk about corruption. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I think we emphasize so much on things that really don't help our people. Oh, yes. Like, like politics. Yeah. Who is sleeping with who? Correct. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? You know. Yeah. 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 Doctor, have you tried going around the counties? Because now that um, devolution has come about and there's so many hospitals being built across the country, this Smoojo, mm -hmm. for instance, I mean, this would be a big sell, especially in uh, 
some of those marginalized counties, huh? what you were talking about FGM is still yes. prevalent, you're talking about you know, all these complications. Have you tried? Hey, Jeff, when they launched this product, this two products actually went to all the key hospitals in the entire country, from Garissa mm. to Central to Kisumu for, for Nyanza mm -hmm. to Kakamega for Western to Nakuru for Rift Valley. The entire country and I engaged the doctors and then I would give them at least 500 tubes of each. In addition to that, I went to 20 uh, mission hospitals mm -hmm. in the country. So in terms of engaging the, 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 the clinicians, I've, I've done reasonably well. Mm. But of course, these are very expensive uh, initiatives that need um, financial support. Oh, yes. And that is where I think the government can help us. Because um, if you're going to uh, develop and industrialize, yeah. we have to in support our local innovations. Because then that motivates and, and that inspires upcoming mm. innovators. Uh -huh. I've been lucky because I've been able to mobilize resources yeah. uh, to do this work. But I still need 300 million Kenya shillings to be able now to go to the next level. Now, these two products, I want them to go um, outside Kenya. Okay. Because they've won, these products have won five awards. Uh -huh. 2012, they won the best award in National Council for Science and Technology, NACOSTI. Then the same year, they won the be best award in science and application category. 2013, they won the African Union Innovation Award. 2015, they won the Tony Elmulu Entrepreneurship Award mm. in, uh, in, in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. This is a gentleman called Tony Elmulu, a, a foundation that has put in uh, 10 billion over the next 10 years. So I was among the pioneer beneficiaries of his uh, support. Yeah, he does yeah. some amazing work, that man. Mm -hmm. Tony yes. Elumelu. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, his foundation is just incredible and promoting, just like you said, mm -hmm. made in Innovation. Africa. Mm -hmm. Innovations. Yeah. Yeah. And every year. year. And his idea is every year he, he supports a thousand innovations in the entire continent, the 54 <laughs> African countries. And this is across the bro, across all the categories, from fashion to design to health mm -hmm. to agriculture. Yeah. And then he gives them the training, the mentorship, the networking, and a bit of funding. And of course, they also get your mentor. Mm. Then last, this year, I won a, an award that is a basically collaboration between Kenya National Innovation Agency in Kenya, and then Loyal Academy of Engineering in the UK, and then Newton Fad in the UK. And so what these people are doing is that they're identifying key innovations. In, in Africa, they're only working with three countries, South Africa, Kenya, and Egypt. And then outside the African continent, they have countries like Brazil, Italy, Philippines. And they support about 15 innovations. So they also give you mentorship, training, networking, and a bit of financial support. The, the 300 million uh, doctor that you said you're looking for, right. uh, are you confident you will get it? Are you, you know, are you getting the kind of support you need? I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get uh, because 150 million will go to once now completing the human clinical trials for the Uniprone for one for HIV and pregnancy. Okay. And then the 150 million now is to create a network, a distribution and sales network for this product so that I can load them out in the entire uh, continent. Mm -hmm. um, what I've done is that um, I registered a startup called Medicos Africa Limited. And then I transferred all the intellectual instruments to that company. So I'll, I'll, I'll be selling shares so that then they can be able to raise money uh, to do this. Uh -huh. the, the, the business so far has been valued at 1.2 billion. So we should be able to um, raise some money um, through maybe selling of shares or uh -huh. even uh, through support from people who have interest on uh, on uh, on uh, social impact. You know, could not do a maiba 63 billion. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Very easy. No, 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 no. I mean, no, no. I'm not going to have any. Oh, okay. Kati kati ya muto. Hawa kwa na time ya kufikiri yoy. Kwa tatole wa na magi. But but you no. know, Jeff, something interesting. Yes. yes. Our perception about money in this country is money. Yeah. If you if you are given today two billion, is it going to change your life? No. Zero. None. Yeah. So it's just a perception. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the idea the Kenyans and Africans, we change our perception about money 
the better for the for us. Yeah. The money that people have are talking about in this country yes. is mind boggling. Absolutely. Yes. We no longer talk about billions. billions. We talk about billions. B. Yeah. How will it help you as a person? I mean, how much can you spend? Exactly. You as a person. Yeah. You, you heard the argument. Yeah. See your 61, yeah. me 7 billion. I know. And you are comfortable. Oh, oh the 7 at least. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do you have a problem selling this a new idea? Kenya. Kwanza mtu akisoma hii rudisha because i have a, a friend eh? yeah. alikuwa anatengeneza gel hii ya kuosha nywele miadi na ana, anapatia bibi bibi anakata bibi yake anakata kwani <laughs> vitu zake so <laughs> alikuwa anachukua container nyingine anamwaga hii anaweka yake anakuletea unatumia alafu afuta miezi sita ndio akamwambia wewe unajua hii kitu mimi na udanga <laughs> And I know you'll be surprised. Yes. Eh? Um, that company, Universal, yes. Yes. is the only WTO certified pharmaceutical manufacturing here. Ah, so Kenya. their standards are very high. The institution that I work for is a WTO collaborating center. Mm -hmm. Now, we are also accredited by to American standards as an animal facility. What that means is that we can actually do contract research with pharmaceutical companies in the in, in the in the US. Good lord. Yeah. That's what the ALAC accreditation means. But how okay look the media is partly to blame Dr. Tari, but mm -hmm. you guys even you guys you don't make enough noise of your own. Why I, I agree with you. Yes. I agree with you. I think we we need to learn to be politicians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you can have a hybrid of a scientist and a politician. <laughs> yeah there's one Royanga <laughs> Fool. The and professor. And later, <laughs> Roy Yanga Poo. Kijan and Poopy. Round. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, science, you also need to be very careful that you don't politicize it. And that's why we are very, very careful how you share information in science. Mm. But remember, you can also lose some of these innovations oh, yeah. by talking too much. I see. Yeah. So because we, even the uh, Kericho governor. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. uh, Japan, yeah. Yeah. He's also patented a few uh, things. Uh? Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he's a real professor. Oh, yes. And he's got his own patents, his own uh, uh, inventions. Yes. But in a video, you know, it's not easy. Yeah, and the reason is that um, there is a lot of um, uh, imitations. You know, the so called fake. Made in Mali. The controversy market in this country is worth over 200 billion annually. So you can spend too much time developing products like this. Somebody comes with a counterfeit product. He's only Kim Waror. Kim Waror. Yes. Kim Waror. Yes. Yes. The implication in terms of the counterfeit products. So you also have to be careful. But I agree. I think we need to make more noise. Yes, because, because counterfeit don't make noise at a CC. The reason no, you need to make noise. No, it's true. It's true. Institute mm -hmm. of Primate Research. Yes. You said it's in Karen. Yes. Uh -huh. We we are WH Corroborating Center, as I said earlier. Uh -huh. ARAC accredited, those are standards, um, American standards. And uh, our mandate is to improve human health by ethically utilizing non human primates. So we use monkeys to develop drugs and vaccines for humans. Yeah, and we, yes. There's a monkey in Congo called the Bonobo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. It would be a good test. Uh, the idea, son. Unfortunately, idea. We, we like using the ones that are burdened because we also have oh. a responsibility of uh, maintaining the resource. Abandoned so by you, whom? Yes. Eh, sorry? Huh? Yeah, Abandoned. Yeah. There are many. There are many. Oh, there are many. Like baboons. Yeah. Yeah, like baboons. Yeah. 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 Zima 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 Zima
Kimutai Kuri says, I didn't know smew gel is made here in Kenya until now. We have so much potential as a country with such people like Daktari. Only that we have to increase the level to buy Kenyan and build Kenyan. Thank you. Well done, Daktari. Uh, esophagus. Uh -huh. Just, eh? Yeah, this is you. Esophagus. Uh, how, how do you pronounce that one? <laughs> how, how do you pronounce it? Oh, esophagus. The esophagus. You owe me, but God. Why is it there? Oh, no, let's ask Dr. Jari. How do you pronounce that? Dr. Mm -hmm. thank you. Muzuri and your professor. <laughs> Doctor and professor. Yes. <laughs> Nikwamba, their area is in, in a kuwa moja. Hataki vitu mingi. Zumezikia? Yes. Yeah. So, so, uh, yes, he hybrid. Doctor, how do you pronounce that? Esophagus. Mezikia? Oh, esophagus. Oh. <laughs> Why do you have the O when you are not pronouncing it? Oh. Uh, so my tweet here, O, E, O, E. <laughs> Nice direction. Uh -huh. Worried though about the new levels of uh, promiscuity that will be seen. Mm -hmm. Fear of HIV sometimes reduces instances of eating anything and anyone. That's true. Eh? So you walk about yeah. But if you have something that will help me know, ah, Nico safe. You know, promiscuity. Well, of course, we are not saying we are not encourage people to be. Uh, promiscuous, mm -hmm. but all what we are doing is to give people options. Okay. Yeah, and then especially the key populations, there are groups we call key populations. Okay. These include the sex workers. Ah. Uh, some people call them prostitutes. We don't, because these are sex workers. They are workers like the job that you're doing. Yes. PSU um, one, one are, yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, MSM, mm -hmm. men having sex with other men. Mm -hmm. uh, long distance truck drivers. And uh, people who you who inject themselves with the drugs mm. because of the needles and yes, the syringes. Yes. yes, those are the key. Uh, and do, 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 uh, those are the key people that you want to help. To target, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Joseph Mohodo. Uh -huh. Mohodo is very light. <laughs> yeah, he says, "Let's celebrate our own." Doctor Muevera, congratulations! He's won great awards more than six years. Unbelievable! I mean, we don't even hear about these people. <laughs> Wamotego Junior says, "Doctor mm -hmm. Muevera needs only three hundred million to save lives and make Katiba better." No, oh, yes. <laughs> While corruption lords are getting away with billions. Hey, hey, keep keep making the steps, Doctor. Keep making the steps. Ali Luyo. Ali? Ali Luyo. Like Alleluia? Alleluia. I said my yoga, very media's focus on nonsense activities. Handshake, yelewete, tanga, tanga. Buri kabisa. Ali. Ali. Do you know? You know? <laughs> Ali, <laughs> but you know what? That's a great point, Doctor. Mm -hmm. You make a great point, and we, yes. we, we, you know, we have to admit <laughs> we are, yeah, we are partly responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Cubo uh -huh. says, "Wow, Doctor Shui uh, Mwedera, very well done. You exemplify African excellence." But we have been conditioned to frown upon your excellence as part of colonialization. Of the mind. Kibo, <laughs> I've been able to demonstrate that you can actually convert your knowledge into product and services that can help the people. Um, there are four things that I think any government should embrace. The first one is technology, innovation, manufacturing, and entrepreneurship. And it's good for people to get the difference between entrepreneurship and business. Business is when you see an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like I came here, if I know that you're having an, an occasion here, I can go and buy sodas, yes. come and sell and make some money. Mm -hmm. That's a business. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship, and that's why the Americans have now embraced this. You remember we had the, the Entrepreneurship Summit that was attended by the former President Obama here in Kenya. Yes. Yes. Entrepreneurship is you identify a problem, create a solution to that problem, but in the process, you also create a business. 
So these products were created to address the issue of sexual reproductive health, maternal and <coughs> child health. In the process of solving that problem, we are also developing it as a business. So entrepreneurship is one of the ways, one of the strategies that we can use to stimulate economic growth and create wealth. Side note, do you think there will never be a cure for HIV? There will be one day. But uh, one of the challenges we have here, and I have to say it um, without um, fear, is that HIV is no longer a problem of the West because they have been able to put every single person who is on HIV on ARVs. You have, if you are 50 years and you are put on ARVs and you get another 30 years, you go up to 80 years. Mm -hmm. So now there's a problem of the developing world. And unless our governments then put money into this, I can assure you that the funding organizations that were so keen in pumping money into HIV research are no longer interested. Now, there was um, a proposal by the African government that every government should put in 1% of their GDP into science, technology and innovations. And uh, South Africa uh, implemented that. Tanzania and neighbors did that. Kenya until about four years ago, we were only doing 0.3%. But now there has been renewed interest in uh, supporting that because mm -hmm. I think uh, the last two, three years we've seen close to 2% of the budgetary allocations, not the GDP, yeah. uh, the, the, financial, the, the, the financial year's allocation, 2% going into, into that. And at least the government has created three organizations, NACOSTI, which is working on the policy issues, the National Research Fund, which then fund researches, and then last, the Kenya, Kenya National Innovation Agency, which then scales up. The only problem is that the kind of money that they, they, they allocate to individual projects is very little. If they're doing research based on animals like, like monkeys, it is so expensive. So when you say a maximum of 20 million, you can't have much done. But I think there is some, 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 some interest uh, by the government to support science, technology, and innovation. Folks, remember, mm -hmm. we have our very own mm -hmm. inventor here. Yes. And he's not the only one. There are many homegrown inventors doing incredible work. Remember this name, Dr. Peter Yeshuhi Mwethera. Mm -hmm. This man has is, is done something that will be a game changer. This week has been a blessing to this nation. Unbelievable. Yeah. The same way people celebrate, you know, <clears throat> Sir Isaac Newton or, yes. you know, Marie Curie huh? or, you know, those inventors. <laughs> Daktari hapa? 200 million. Na hiyo ajia sabu ya mazomo. 200. Ya research. Doctor, Dr. Mwedera, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank Keep you. doing what you do. Thank and you. we have heard what you said. Oh, yeah. And I hope others have heard. Kabisa. We try and just turn this thing around, man. Let's celebrate yes. our local heroes. Masikia. Catch Jeff Koinange and Professor Hamo every day, Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. only on Hot 96.